guess I would want to live on whatever planet was, uh, you know, safest and most habitable. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, ever so simply, just whichever one could sustain life in the most uh, kind of, um, you know, trust trustworthy way in the most kind of in the safest way that's where i'd want to go okay so here's the those scenes between me and, and kai were really great to shoot because it was it's it's really sweet you know at the at the, at the core of this thing is a very human story and in that is also uh, a love story and so i, th I thought of, that it was really sweet to see these two characters you know feel what it feels like to fall in love for the first time I think that, you know, the therapy scenes with, with Richard, with Colin Farrell's character, made me think a lot because I think that's, those are moments in which, you know, before she obviously like starts her relationship with Christopher, I think that's like the kind of the most vulnerable that we've seen with Selah. And those are like the moments in which she's really kind of talking about, you know, all these kind of questions that she's having and, and the ways in which they, they really are like plaguing her. And so those were kind of really uh, em emotional ones. And I loved that this was, uh, you know, a sci-fi film with the core, a real story of of, of humanity and, and human connection and emotional growth and adventure and everything like that. And, and I was excited to take that plunge. And then as, as the team kind of started to build up, I was just really, really excited to get to tell that story and in such good company and work with so many incredibly talented actors that I have always loved. Yeah, I was really excited to, to get to work with everybody. I thought it was really interesting the way that, not, that, that all of these characters, not only Selah, uh, get to explore kind of naturalism in a very unnatural circumstance and how to, you know, portray that kind of n numbed effect that they're all feeling by being on the blue, but also remaining kind of as human as you can be, especially for Sayla, because I think she is, to me, the character that has the most desire to be human and to feel human and to feel normal and to feel human connection and everything like that and so those are, that was something that I was really excited to explore with her and I also really admire just her kind of determination to be happy and to feel joy in whatever small ways that she can in this very kind of strange um, you know unnatural environment. I think that's what's really interesting about this film is that what it's really exploring is, you know, what are our true natures as human beings? You know, are we innately bad or good people? Um, and, you know, especially when people have been raised exactly in the same way in exactly the same environment, um, so that that's not a factor anymore, can we be inherently bad or inherently good? And I think that that's kind of the divide that happens, and I think that that's kind of a the the real kind of fight and... and, and um, struggle of this movie is kind of fighting against our own natures and figuring out, you know, what those even really are. Richard is the closest thing to a parent that they've ever known, and that's kind of a very natural, you know, human relationship to crave is one with your parents, um, you know, or one with a caretaker of any kind. And so I think that Sela being the one that's like, has the most longing to feel human and to feel connection to somebody else, really cherishes cherishes the relationship that she has with Richard because he gives her that human connection and he makes her feel cared for and, and seen and look at, looked after. And that's why I think her, her relationship to him is uh, so special to her. Colin's an actor that I that I love so much and whose work I've admired for so, so long. So I was so happy to find out that it was going to be him playing Richard. And it's been just an absolute pleasure working with him. He's really just a lovely guy and so, so easy to work with. So it's been great. I think that fans will really respond to this film because it explores themes that are, that go beyond kind of a... a, a a sci-fi fantasy environment. It touches on real themes and real questions that we all have ourselves, like who are we? What is the meaning of life? You know, what are our true human natures? I think that those are things that people think about all the time. And so the fact that this movie um, really is about that, I think will speak to a lot, a lot of people and, you know, people beyond just sci-fi fans. Christopher and Zach discover that the blue's purpose is actually to kind of numb and dull all of our natural senses and the natural things that we would be feeling at this age, whether that's sexual desire or, or just kind of any kind of surplus of energy. Um, they don't want us to be feeling any of that, and it's also hard to be feeling all those things living in such a confined space when there is no way out of it. So it's um, kind of a drug that they have created in order to make life 
kind of possible for us, so to speak, on the ship, but also to kind of dull all of the senses that they don't want um, so exuberant as it would make life and work here on the ship um, I mean, almost impossible. Sela really starts to feel the most human when she goes off the blue, like all of them kind of do. She's starting to feel all those senses that have been kind of, that she's been kind of deprived of that are normal human senses to feel. And so I think that she's coming into all of that. And with that also coming into her leadership qualities that to me, she has innately in her. Um, and I feel like she really comes into her own as a person and as a leader when she goes off the blue. To me, the biggest theme of this movie is, is human nature and, and who are we really at our core when we take away things like experience and, and environment and childhood and all those things that aren't factors in this story. Who are we really when we are, you know, quote unquote, like it's said in the script, pure humans, when we are completely unaffected by experience or, or, or anything like that, and we're all raised exactly the same way in kind of the most basic, necessary way possible, who are we really at our core as humans, and what is our true nature when we're left to our own devices like this? Um, to me, that's the biggest theme in the movie and something that's explored um, quite thoroughly and, and very interestingly. questions um what tv series would each of you like to guest star on oh wow really i would have to say like i watch a lot of like tv series from i mean not yesteryear they're not like that old but i i think i would probably say sex in the city but like that is you know i, I would like like in like back when it was happening you know um that i would have to i would love to like go to lunch with the ladies <laughs> okay that was a way more serious answer than i was expecting I'm i was like wow um, Probably The Wizard of Oz. I, I've seen The Wizard of Oz. Like um, it was my favorite movie when I was like little, like really, really little. And my parents always remind me about how like they used to like I used to watch it literally over and like it would like end and they would like put the like the tape like back in <laughs> like literally over and over and over again when I was little because I loved it so much. So that's probably the one I've seen the most. <laughs> Great movie. Coming into why I get to talk to you guys. Um, I really enjoy movies that sort of ask questions about the future. And it, like, basically this movie is not science fiction as much as it's a real possibility as to what might happen down the road on our planet. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of Voyagers? Sure, I, I think that's, you know, the most attractive. That fascination for, you know, the future and, and, and what might become of it is is something that also like you know our characters share because like you know like ty was saying they're they're not going to see the planet you know their grandchildren will see the planet and so i think they too you know knowing that their entire lives are going to be spent on this ship working towards uh you know the the uh, a, a mission that they're never going to see co fully come to fruition you know i think that probably is, inspires a lot of kind of uh, fascination in them also about like what is this future going to look like because we're not going to be the ones the ones experiencing it you know what will our grandchildren's lives look like when they when they reach the planet and so I think that that's a a, a fascination that that both our characters and also our you know probably our the, the the audience will will share. One of the things I took away from watching the film is that um, and I don't want to do spoilers but there's a bit in the movie where people are presented with facts and they choose to avoid them or just not even acknowledge the facts that they're presented with. And I found it very timely with what's gone on in the real world over the last number of months. Um, and you obviously couldn't have known what the real world was gonna look like when you made this film, but- I think there definitely is, a, is an aspect of like, who do we trust? You know, when we're being presented with truth or, or fact, it's like how, you know, whose truth is that and, and where is that coming from? And I think that, you know, on the ship, there's a lot of kind of, you know, uh, as we see kind of come to fruition in, in the story, like it's like uh, all of a sudden they, they're, they're being presented with, you know, they're, they're being presented with the opportunity to kind of question that truth for the first time and, and think about, you know, what really is going on and why are we being told these things and why, you know, and, and, and who really are we supposed to be? Um, trusting. So I think that that is something that plays into uh, the, the kind of madness that, that ensues is how everybody, you know, chooses to approach that. Thank you so much for your time. Congrats on the movie. You both did a really good job. Um, good luck with the rest of your speed dating. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great day. Hey, Lily. Hey, Ty. Hey, hey how, how are you? you?
Hey, I'm great. Um, this movie was so entertaining. So this mission starts off very calm, quickly turns into chaos. Um, how would you describe this mission once everyone stops following the rules? Lily, let's start with you. <laughs> um, I guess I would, you know, to, to describe it very simply, I would say just total chaos. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's what you would imagine when a bunch of teenagers who have known no one but each other for their entire lives and will be confined to the space of spaceship for their entire lives um all of a sudden stop taking this uh sedative that they've been taken <laughs> and, uh, and you can imagine the you know the chaos that comes from uh the rush of feelings and hormones and emotions and and uh all of all of that you know just imagine where that takes you and it's a wild ride to say the least yeah Definitely. Yeah. Lots of hormones, lots of emotions. Uh, Ty, if you found yourself in this position, do you think you would be like your character you take on that leadership role or would you be the rule breaker? Oh gosh. I mean, I think I would try not to, to, you know, I would definitely have some fun, but uh, <laughs> I would try to, you know, probably keep things a bit, a bit uh, more kosher, you know, I feel like you can still have fun and, uh, and not, you know, you know, create such havoc and not like destroy your entire environment. I agree. Honestly, I think that I, I wouldn't say that I like thrive on chaos. I'm quite like an organized person. I like to, uh, I don't know, I guess I, I, but I also kind of, kind of am a real rule breaker too sometimes. So I guess it would just, you know, I'm a Gemini. So I guess it would just depend on how I was feeling <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> But I guess I could see myself being the kind of person that would like maybe engage in the chaos a little bit and then be like, get kind of stressed out about it and be like, wait, we need to make things, make sure things are all okay. And then I would take part in the, in the cleaning up of the chaos. <laughs> it's true. You'd want to have fun, but your Gemini nature would make you very logical. And you yeah, just have to go back to making logical decisions. And I would be struggling with that the whole time. And, and yeah. like, I want to have fun, but I want things to be clean and organized. <laughs> yeah, we can have both, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Okay, so this is a tricky question, but if you were, you know, on this space voyage for 80 plus years, what's the one thing you would take with you? I would have to say, well, I've been, I've, I've said like a, a, a weapon because I think I would want to feel Ooh. like I could, I could, you know, defend myself, not like to hurt, just like a knife or something, <laughs> not to, not to like hurt, inflict pain or anything, but just so that I could, you know, I could create I could build things or whatever like you know it's yeah. a good tool to have but also now that I'm thinking about it I'm like maybe just a, a travel buddy because yeah. you know, strength in numbers I think I would yeah. be a travel buddy Ty you could come with me if you want all right I'll go I'll go with you okay you would do that for 80 plus you guys like each other that much that you'd be stuck on a ship for 80 plus years well sooner that than all alone I think all alone yeah. I would really get it probably upset. kill over before then <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> Okay, Ty, what's one thing you would bring? I would bring Lily. Uh, oh. Well, or, or since Lily's all around. Maybe you could bring your math. Oh, that's good. I like that. I like that. Um, so I'm such a huge fan of Colin Farrell. He's so good in this. He definitely plays this father type role. What was it like for you guys working with him? Yeah, super, super fun. I mean, he was. Oh, that's cool. Cool. So much to learn from from somebody like that, and I think that you know it's uh, it's really extra special when you when somebody who's like so talented and who you already have so much respect for, uh, you know, is also just like a super normal, cool, nice person, you know, because uh, he he is like you know is is such a, a a phenomenal actor, and and so he would have every reason not to be this like super humble, cool guy, and then he is he's 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 wonderful to work with. Ah, that's awesome. Well, congrats on the film, guys. It's so much fun. I definitely felt the chemistry with everyone. So yeah, congrats. Thank you. <laughs> so Appreciate much. it. Thanks so much. Nice chatting with you. It's been about five years since you made your big screen debut in Yoga Hosers. Your dad was also in that with you. Do you guys ever see yourself acting again together? You know, I think, uh, I think, uh, loved this movie. It was literally Lord of the Flies in space, two of my favorite things. Um, <laughs> did you guys read Lord of the Flies for this? What kind of training or prep went into it, into being in, in the space of it all? Lily Rose, what about for you? I, yeah. heard, I heard the costumes were very hot and sweaty. I mean, we were sh we were shooting like in the kind of peak of summer in, in Romania. So it was definitely like really, really warm. And yeah, there was a lot of uh, 
a lot of uh, sweat for sure. <laughs> we definitely got our, uh, you know, our steps in, our, our miles in for that day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the, the prep for this one was really interesting because, you know, there's usually you have kind of like the characters, uh, you know, what you imagine to be their backstory, like, you know, to kind of nourish the character and, and, and how they may be when you meet them in the movie. But obviously there kind of isn't that opportunity for these these kids because they've been, you know, literally created for this mission and have known nothing outside of that world. And so I think it was uh, it was an interesting challenge, like working with that. But I think uh, the most important for me was really connecting to the very human uh, emotions that my character is having and all of these kind of like very normal questions that she's asking herself. But I think it's normal to kind of sit with these questions of like, who do I want to be and what do I want my life to mean and, and all of these things. And, uh, and so, yeah, I think just connecting to those feelings was, was key for me in uh, connecting to her. Do you see in this movie that the, the young men and women don't like that their blue drink is being tampered with and as a result, they start rebelling, which is also just part of, I think, being young and part of venturing into adulthood. Did you ever go through a rebellious phase or what is the secret to keeping the good head on your shoulders? Uh, what about you, Lily? I mean, I, I think that for me, it's, you know, I think those rebellious phases are, are uh, inevitable and just like part of growing up. You know, you can't be like perfect all the time. I mean, nobody's perfect, you know, period. I think that's, uh, that's just like the fact of, of, of life. But I think that, you know, a, a, a big, part of like keeping a good head on your shoulders is is uh just having a lot of like self-awareness and 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 never feeling like you take yourself too seriously and i think it's always good to uh you know have a good self-reflection about the things that you've done and 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 always thinking about how you could be better because like i said you know none of us are perfect i would never think it uh beneficial to arrive at a place where you're just like i'm good i've made my bad choices and my good choices and now i'm good you know i think that life is just like a always a, a you know a, a search for just like you know a quest for goodness and how can i be better and be better for myself and for the people in my life and uh yeah i love that well, that space you guys have navigated hollywood what have you learned about the fame part of it all that it's like a silly side effect of uh what we both really love doing you know like i i think i can speak for both of us when i say that like we just really really love our jobs and we're both really passionate about it and and feel really grateful and and privileged that we're able to wake up and do things that we love to do and uh and you know there's there are other things that come along with that that i can't say i'm very uh interested in what's interesting to me is uh you know beautiful storytelling and complex characters and and things like that and so that's really that's the only uh interesting part of it for me i mean I, I don't I, I wouldn't consider myself uh, a, a famous person. You know, I walk down the street and no one bothers me. Lily Rose, um, it's been about five years since you made your big screen debut in Yoga Hosers, which is <laughs> time just goes by so fast. <laughs> yeah, time flies. Time Same. flies. Your dad was also in that with you. Do you guys ever? see yourself acting again together? Do you look at projects together? You know, I think, uh, I think uh, never say never, you know, I, that's really not something that I, uh, you know, am, that I, that I consider first and, and foremost. And what's interesting to me is, is my, is, you know, the particular character that I may or may not be playing and then the story that it's telling and everything. But yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I love to work with, uh, with great actors. Hi guys. Hi Lily Rose. Hi Ty. Hi. Hi Derry. How are you doing, Lily Rose? How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you holding up with all of this? Are you in America? Or are you in Paris? Where are you? I I'm in New York right now. I'm in New York at the moment. And, uh, you know, happy happy to see you. Happy to see Ty, you know. Oh. Happy to be uh, able to release our film right now. Yeah, it's very exciting. Ty, how are you holding up? And where are you? You're filming, aren't you? I am, I am, I'm working on a film here. We'll talk about that a bit later. Okay. So guys, tell me, Lily Rose, let's start with you. What did you love about this story? You know, I really loved the 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 questions that it kind of was posing about um, about humanity and about our, our true natures. And I loved that it was, uh, you know, 
such a kind of like fantastical uh, story in the sense that it takes place, you know, in outer space and it, and it feels so far away, but at the same time, it really brings us back to uh, our true natures. And, uh, and I think that that uh, is, is going to be, you know, I think that that hopefully is going to make it so that the viewer can still really relate to, to all of the characters, because I think that the story is very kind of human at its core. Um, and uh, the, the kind of like things that all the characters are going through are, are things that we all maybe have gone through about like, thinking about what our purpose is and who we want to be and, and, and how we want to be that person. And, you know, so I was really touched by all of those questions that I felt that were so present um, just upon reading the script for the first time. Ty, how about you? What made you want to be part of this movie? Well, I think I second all of those things. Um, these questions, these characters are asking and the same questions we're all asking in our everyday lives. Lily Rose, you filmed in Romania, right? Yes. I know it was very hot and in the costumes and the confined space. How was that? How was that filming? It was, it was definitely very hot. It was a, it was a beautiful summer and we also couldn't get too much sun because then also it would have been a, a continuity problem and, and yeah. no one understood why we have these like amazing tans, tans. even though they've never <laughs> seen sunlight um, or at least not since they were like seven. So I think that we were definitely watching out for that. But no, I mean, it was, it was beautiful. You know, I, I love the, the summertime. And so getting to spend my summer um, in Romania and making so many new awesome friends and, and shooting this film was, uh, was such a fun experience. We had, we had the best time. Ty, before going into this, were you into like space travel? Have you ever dreamed of going to space? If you got the opportunity, would you? I think it depends on the opportunity, but definitely, yeah, definitely interested in it. Wow, very brave. I don't know if I, I can mean, say the same. You, go, you, you wouldn't go. be up for it? If it became, never, if it became never safe. Never. If it was extremely safe and I definitely could come home like exactly how they found me, <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know. I would love for Ty to go and let me know how it was. And if it was amazing, then maybe I'll come along next time. <laughs> See how he comes back, how he looks yeah. when he comes back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say is your favorite voyage you've ever been on, Lily Rose? My favorite voyage that I've ever been on. Wow. Um, that's a great question because I, I I love traveling and that's something that I've really missed being able to do um, this past year. I would have to say though, like, I mean, I, I like, I, I love traveling and I love going to new places, but I think the voyage home is always like the best one to me. Like, and I feel very at home in both um, Los Angeles and Paris. That's like the two places that I grew up. And so I think like there's nothing to me like the feeling of landing in LA or landing in Paris. And I just feel like, ah. Oh, I'm home, you know? Um, so I think the voyage home, you know, in, in uh, you know, literally and, and like metaphorically and everything is, 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 the, is the most important voyage. Yeah, absolutely. Ty, tell me about Boston. So you're filming with George Clooney and Ben Affleck right now. How's that going? <laughs> All good. Lily Rose, you're making lipstick now. I saw your Chanel video. You're actually you're wearing it. You're making it. What's next? I I wish I wish I had the expertise to actually make it like the like the amazing uh, the amazing people who actually do. Uh, but no, I I I'm uh, I'm I was lucky enough to go and take a tour of the uh, of the the lab where they create the lipstick and everything and kind of. Uh, witness the process and everything and it was so much fun and so so uh, so interesting so eye-opening <laughs> you've become a style icon what is that like to have that label uh well thank you I don't I can't say that that's a label that I really uh, uh in, internalize <laughs> but that's a really nice compliment and and thank you and uh yeah I mean I've always loved like fashion and and dressing up and uh just wearing what makes me feel good and like having fun with it yeah you always look amazing. Thank Gorgeous. you so much. Ty, if there's a ready, another Ready Player, will you be part of it? Would you be up for it? And what about this movie? It's so like open for a sequel. Would you like to see where this went? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> I think that this film is... Uh... Lily Rose, how proud are your parents that you've become this amazing actress? Uh, you know, as proud as uh, any parents would be when their kid is like doing what they love. You know, I really am, feel so fortunate to uh, do a, a job that I really, really love. And I know that I'm, I'm very fortunate to be able to 
to say that and uh and yeah so I think uh yeah everybody's happy <laughs> did you guys get to have some fun on set all together with Colin it's such an amazing um cast did you get to like bond and hang out Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I I feel like we were like so blessed to uh, all get along as well as we did. And, and we had so much fun making this movie. You know, it was pre-COVID. So like on and off set, we were all like always hanging out together and just having uh, having the best time. Ty, Lily Rose, thank you so much. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Thanks for chatting and stay safe. Hope to see you soon. There is something in like falling in love for the first time that feels like you know, all of these things that you've never experienced before. Lily Rose and Ty turn a spaceship into a dance floor in between takes of Voyagers. Lily Rose plays Chief Medical Officer Sayla, who embraces both the warrior and sensual side of her character. You really get to see her kind of come into her own and come into her strength and her her power as a, as a person and, and really uh, grow up in a really special way. <laughs> Starting off her career as a model, it's no surprise Lily Rose has served some looks as she's grown. So we got the stories behind the scenes, starting with this Lilac Chanel showstopper. It was my second time going to Venice Film Festival, which is just such an amazing um, experience. And yeah, I was so excited to wear that look. I remember actually I chose it while we were shooting Voyagers. I remember like showing a few of my, maybe I even showed you, Ty, like a few of my, I'm like, do you think I should wear this? <laughs> like, yeah. Lily's actually uh, handing me down uh, her old dresses to wear. Ty was actually going to yeah. borrow that dress. For anything, but... Got to tailor and everything. <laughs> that one actually is like so special to me because that's when I got to be the, the bride um, at the Chanel show a couple years ago. And that was like really my childhood dream. Like when I was little, I remember when I got the call being like, are you sure you're sending this to the right person? Oh my God, yeah, that was not too long ago. That was back in the fall. That was so much fun. I actually had just come off of shooting Wolf, this film that I shot in Ireland. And it was a very, you know, it was a COVID shoot. So it was like very locked down and everything. So that was kind of my first, like, you know, re-entering into like a, a more social, you know, a more populated um, environment. And so it was really fun.